Right, so this week I thought I'd talk about the anatomy of the kidney. I never know how long my videos are going to be. I always aim to keep them shorter than they end up being because I never know how long they're going to be because I haven't recorded them yet, let alone edited them. But if we're going to talk about the kidney, how much could I possibly talk about the kidney? The anatomy of the kidney is not that much. I'm not going to do the physiology. I'm not a physiologist. I'm just going to talk about the structures of the kidney. So, here's a nice model. Uh, here's a big model. And do, 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 do. this is also good. And I've got some torso models, torso models. Let's use this guy, right, guy? So we've got lots of bits. Got my usual skeleton here, facing backwards because the kidneys are found posteriorly. They're found between the levels about T12 and L3. The kidney on the right is a little bit lower than the kidney on the left, just by a few centimetres because of the liver pushing it down, but they're generally at these levels here. So look, here's the last ribs, this is T12, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, so L1, 2, 3. So they're, they're actually very low down, you know, they're down here. And notice that the ribs, they curl around and they descend. So the, the last couple of ribs, ribs 11 and 12, are protecting the kidneys down here, right? So they're, they're, kind, of, they're kind of in here somewhere. And in fact, the more inferior kidney, the, the kidney on the right hand side, is only, you know, a couple of fingers above this crest here. So they're, they're very posterior and they're quite low down. There are, there's a whole load of, of, of muscle in the posterior abdominal wall here, which is protecting the kidneys and we'll look at that in a moment. Don't mix the kidneys up with the spleen. The kidneys are retroperitoneal. What does retroperitoneal mean? So the peritoneal cavity is the cavity within the abdomen that all this stuff is within, the small intestine, um, the stomach, and all these bits and bobs are within the, the small intestine. If you don't know what I'm talking about with peritoneum, peritoneal cavities, and mesenteries, go and have a look at my uh, cling film and peritoneum video. That'll clear it all up for you, hopefully. But if, if most of the GI tract is within this peritoneal sac, within the greater sac, within the peritoneal cavity, then the kidneys are behind that, that bag of peritoneum. They're posterior to that bag of peritoneum, so they're retroperitoneal, right? Um, and we'll, disem we'll disembowel this in a bit to see where those are. Um, but first of all, I wanted to point out this here. This is the spleen. Do not mix up the kidneys for the spleen. The spleen is lateral. See how lateral this is? And it's, it's higher up. It's between ribs, what, 9, 10, and 11? And it's on the left side. There's only one spleen, two kidneys. Oh, uh, stomach. So here we go. And here are the two kidneys. Um, this one has been partially dissected, this one is complete. We can see the suprarenal glands here, so these are the two adrenal or suprarenal glands that will produce adrenaline and a lot of very important steroids and what have you. Here's the spleen, here are the kidneys, so they're retroperitoneal, we've taken the peritoneum off to see the two kidneys. So this muscle here is psoas major, here's iliacus, they come together to form iliopsoas, and here, you see these, these fibres here? These are quadratus lumborum. So iliopsoas is a major hip flexor and quadratus lumborum will give lateral flexion of the spine. So the two kidneys are sat on top of those two muscles there, iliopsoas and quadratus lumborum. Um, they're surrounded by fat, they've got their nice fascial spaces and we've got the ilioinguinal and the iliohypogastric nerves are running around from the lumbosacral plexus posterior to the two kidneys in these three muscle layers of muscle here forming the abdominal wall to get around here um, and we can see the blood vessels. We talk about the kidneys having a superior pole and an inferior pole. I've taken all of this stuff out but the left kidney, so you can see the pancreas here, 
the stomach goes on top. If we take the stomach out, you can see there's a little bit of the superior pole of the kidney in here. Here's the adrenal gland. Here's the spleen. Here's the pancreas. If we take this out again, so you can see that the pancreas is running across the mid part of the, the left kidney and the inferior part of the kidney. Well, look, here's the splenic flexure of the large colon. So that's up here. Um, and look, here's the hepatic flexure here up against this kidney. And then of course, we've got the liver covering much of this side and the stomach goes in there. Now, here's the inferior vena cava and here's the aorta. So the blood supply and drainage to and from the kidneys uh, from the renal arteries and the renal veins. But look, the renal veins are anterior and the renal arteries are posterior. Um, if this is the abdominal aorta, we see these three anterior branches here, the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery supplying blood to the GI tract. And look how this left renal vein gets trapped between the superior mesenteric artery as it comes out of the aorta and, and goes to the GI tract. That's an interesting piece of anatomy there. I mean, um, there's a possibility that drainage through the renal vein could be affected by the superior mesenteric artery compressing it and doing funny things, right? Um, so the inferior vena cava, the blood drains from the kidney through these renal veins to the inferior vena cava. And here are the, here's one renal artery here on the right, the other renal artery on the left is hidden. So the aorta is, is to the left, so the renal artery on the right is longer, the renal artery on the left is shorter. And these are big blood vessels because of course the function of the kidney is to look at the blood, to take out excess water, to take out toxins, um, and it has a few other jobs. So the kidneys see a lot of blood because their job is to do with filtering the blood. So these are big blood vessels. The blood vessels enter and leave the kidneys at the hilum. Just like most organs have a hilum where things go in and out. Um, so the kidney is complete around here and it has this hilum here where the renal arteries and veins enter and leave, but also we see the ureter coming out here, right? And the ureter is descending down on either side to the bladder. We can see here some of the structure of the kidney, but let me get a bigger model. Ah. So here we can see on this model, those ureters are complete and they descend down to the bladder here and into the bladder on either side. But we're not talking about the ureters in the bladder today, we're talking about the kidneys. Now, if we, like many organs, um, the kidney is described as having a cortex on the outside and medullary tissue on the inside. But you can see that the blood vessels are passing into the cortex and these here, so these are uh, cortical columns. This is the cortex around here. These are the renal pyramids or the medullary pyramids. So you can imagine, as we saw on the other model, that these are cut in section, in coronal section, so they're flattened triangles almost. But if they were in three dimensions, they'd be more of a pyramidal shape. So urine collects at the tip of the renal pyramids and this small space here and here and here these small spaces are the minor calyces so urine drip 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 collects in the minor calyces so three or four of these minor calyces will drain into a larger space a major calyx again imagine these in three dimensions we've got some pyramids out here as well and some calyces minor calyces in three dimensions and then three or four of these major calyces will drain into this larger space here and this larger space is the renal pelvis. So the urine collects into the renal pelvis and from the renal pelvis we find the ureter and the urine can drain down the ureter to the bladder. And of course the ureter is muscular so you can do this upside down and you can do this in zero gravity. It all works. Here's the bigger model. So here's our cortex, 
here's the medulla, the medullary pyramid. Look, here are our, our, here are our nephrons. You can see the blood vessels coming in here. So we've got the efferent and afferent arterioles. Um, there's the, the Bowman's capsule. So there are the capillaries there. And then here is proximal convoluted tubule. There's the loop of Henle descending down into the medulla. Here's a bigger, here's a bigger one down here. Uh, the loop of Henle, and then we have the distal convoluted tubule. And this is the collecting duct here, the collecting system. So, you know, the fluid passes through this tubule. The stuff that's not reabsorbed back into the blood collects in the collecting tubule here. So you can see how it collects at the tip of the medullary pyramid. And down here would be the, the minor calyx here. Uh, there's your Bowman's capsule. So you find these in the cortex and you find the loops of Henle and the collecting systems in the medulla. So how's that? We've talked about where you find the kidneys, um, anatomically, the structures nearby. We've talked about their blood supply um, and we've talked about the urine collecting systems and we've talked about the structures within the kidney. Um, and that's about it. All right, so the structure of the kidney relates to the function of the kidneys. So when you look at the physiology, when you look at all those ducts and tubules, just add that onto your anatomy and your understanding will be more complete. See, told you it was going to be short.